Hi, welcome to Catch Fire London's YouTube channel. We're really glad that you joined us today. We really pray that this message inspires you in your relationship with God. If it's in your heart to sow into our ministry uh, to help us uh, fund uh, having things like this YouTube channel, having things like our podcast, uh, we'd love you to partner with us. The link is up here in the corner. Um, and you can give any gift, any amount, and anything that you give will help us uh, continue to grow the media department of this church uh, and make sure that we get the message of Jesus uh, as far and wide as we can. So bless you. Uh, and let me just pray for you as you listen to this message. God, I just pray that as, uh, as my friend here listens to this message, God, that you would just open their hearts to something fresh of you, something fresh of the kingdom, that they would be transformed as they encounter your presence through this message. Amen. We have a very special treat this morning. Um, I was chatting with uh, Sarah. Many of you all know Sarah and Samuel Nudds. They've been part of our family a long, long time. Sarah was actually officially the first ever member of Catch the Fire London. Uh, we planted the church, Stu and Chloe, uh, and Abby and myself, uh, in our front room. Uh, and technically, she was the first ever person who was part of Catch the Fire London who wasn't part of the leadership team. She was our first tither as well. Five, five pound a month or whatever it was, but we gratefully received that seed of faith. Um, and we've had the pleasure uh, over the years of getting to know Sarah and Samuel more and more. Um, Sarah actually lived with us uh, for quite a while, so many, many great stories. If any of you, after seeing her today being an amazing uh, woman of God, uh, would like to have some more grounding as to what, uh, you know, some of the, you know, sometimes we see people and they just seem perfect. So if you'd like some uh, information about, you know, perhaps, no, I'm kidding. It's been a great, great journey. Um, Abby and I actually went out to Kenya uh, prior to planting uh, Catch Fire London. We were actually set. You know, God uh, told us that uh, we were to follow Stu and Chloe. And uh, before God had even uh, sown the seed of the idea of Catch the Fire London, the vision for Catch Fire London, uh, Stu and Chloe were planning to actually move to Kenya with Sarah and be over there full time. And we were all ready to move out to Kenya as well. We were lined up to quit our jobs. And we went out there um, for an extended uh, period, I think probably kind of six weeks uh, prior to planting the church. And, you know, when you go on mission, when you experience something, um, it's one thing to understand something conceptually, but when you go and you experience it, uh, God breaks your heart in a way that's unique. Um, put your hand up here if you've been to the project in Kenya with Kenya Children's Project. Hands up. Okay, keep your hands up. Friends and family, if you have not been to Kenya, I would thoroughly recommend it. Um, go and find someone who's got their hand up and ask them for their story, their experience of being in Kenya. Um, it's an amazing thing. The project's doing amazing work. And I asked Sarah uh, to come today. They're part of the church family, but uh, they work for the Kenyan Children's Project. I've asked them to come and to give us an update on what's happening with the Kenyan Children's Project. We support the Kenyan Children's Project uh, financially each month. Uh, and so many of the staff that work for the Kenyan Children's Project are part of this family. So, uh, so much so it's it's not just a project we support and it's kind of over there and you know it's, it's something that's very much part of this family uh, and so I don't want you to think of this as the Kenyan Children's Project a separate charity the Kenyan Children's Project is very much the same DNA as us and it's part of our family think of them like a brother or a sister as opposed to a, a different charity so um, I want you guys to stand and I want you to stretch out your hands and I'm going to pray for Sarah as she comes and brings the word of God um, and I, what I would like is for us, as we're praying for Sarah, to also be extending a blessing to this amazing charity. They are literally saving lives uh, in Kenya, and I'm sure as the Kenyan Children's Project expands, we're going to see much more fruit. But why don't you just stretch out a hand, and let's pray for Sarah. God, we thank you for this amazing woman of God. God, we thank you for everything that she is uh, to us as a family, but God, we thank you for everything she is in the kingdom, for the way that she's laid her life down for your purposes, for your glory. God, I thank you for the amazing fruit that has uh, happened in your kingdom because of the seeds that she's sown in faithfulness and in obedience. And Sarah, we honor you uh, as an amazing woman of God, and we're excited to be changed and transformed, even as we hear you uh, preach the word of God today, as you inspire us and challenge us and encourage us. Jesus, we thank you that we are being transformed more and more into your image as we understand more and more your heart for this project and for the people in Kenya. So God, bless us, we ask. Bless her, we ask. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Yes, as Tom says, we definitely feel like family with Catch the Fire. You should definitely know in Kakamega, where our, um, our project is based, a uh, well-known saying is Shikamoto, which means Catch the Fire. So all of our staff, they feel one with Catch the Fire, and we, we share a lot of the same values. And so 
Even this morning, I want to talk a lot about transformation. And now, transformation is a huge value to the Kenyan Children's Project. In Kenya, we are actually registered as an NGO called Children's Transformation Project Kenya. And so, sometimes you'll hear uh, that be our name, but we are one and the same organization. But the reason we're called that is because we are for transformation. We are for seeing God come and transform lives. And who knows, catch the fire new values. I know you were you rebranded last year and one of your one of your main values is transformation. So it's presence encounter transformation. And so I just love that you can't you can't separate the Kenyan Children's Project and catch the fire. In my mind, they are one and the same. They are, um, the Kenyan Children's Project is very much an outworking of the family here. And like Tom says, so many people have come out to Kenya with us, which has been so exciting and a lot of fun. We also are going to be running some more trips in the future. So please chat to us if you are interested um, in coming. But this morning, do you believe that God is a God that transforms? I mean, really believe. I really want to encourage you, even as I'm sharing, I'm going to be sharing stories of transformation. And the reason um, my hope is that every story that I share, that it will stir in you something that cries out, God, if you can do it for them, then you can do it for me. That we would be a church and a people that believe God is a God that transforms and changes lives. You know, that he could change my family, that he could change my business, that he could change my dreams, my home, my work situation, that this is the kind of God that we serve, that he is active. I want a God, I want to worship a God that is alive and real, and that is the kind of God that we serve. So KCP, who are we? I just wanted to quickly share a few updates with you. So our mission, it might be on the screen. So our mission as an organization is we partner with families and communities to see the lives of vulnerable children be transformed. Come on, who's excited about that? That is a great mission statement. And our vision is to see all children thriving in a safe and loving family. And you know, that is all children. God has given us a mandate for Kenya, but it, but it goes beyond that. Our vision is for all children globally, globally to be thriving in a safe and loving family. Because that is God's design. That is God's intention. So where did it all begin? So it has been quite a journey, can I tell you? So the project was first conceived in an idea in 2001. So at this point, Chloe and Stu, who founded the organization, they visited Kenya for the first time. And they were actually visiting Kenya to check up on some wells that some churches had fundraised for. And it was during that trip that their hearts broke for the, the children living on the streets. And so it was in that moment that the Lord released to them a passion and an idea and inspiration for changing lives. That was way back in 2001. And I, they're not here to defend themselves, but I knew Chloe and Stu back then. They were my youth leaders. I've known them since I was 10 years old. And I mean, they're not here to defend themselves and I've got the mic. But I would just like to let you know that they are, they were and are very normal people. They were not superhumans that God gave an idea to. They were normal people. Stu was a vet. Chloe was a personal trainer. They had no desire to start a charity. But God placed something within them that burned. They came back from Kenya and they said, when we retire, we will do something. They, you know, when God gives you a dream, when God gives you a desire to bring change, it burns within you. And every single person in here has a calling. You have a calling on your life to bring about change, to bring about the kingdom of God, and it will burn within you. And even as I'm talking today, I'm sharing a lot about the Kenyan Children's Project, but I want you to be open and um, letting the Holy Spirit awaken in you. What is what has the Father placed in me? What is it? What is my call? And so, 
They came back from Kenya a little bit wrecked and a number of years passed and they just could not get this idea out of their heads. They had to do something for the children that were dying on the streets in Kakamega. And so they decided to do a fundraiser and they organized a triathlon. And so at this point, I was part of the youth group and I remember I definitely did not sign up to partake in the tri triathlon, but I did hand out water and was like the best cheerleader around. And so we were handing out water and that's how it started. They didn't have money, they didn't have, um, they weren't leading a church, they weren't itinerant ministers, they were normal people that had a calling from the Lord, that had a stirring from the Lord and they wanted to cause change and make a difference. And that is, that is the foundation of the Kenyan Children's Project, a faith-filled, wild, outrageous yes and you know on the journey that we have been on we have needed to know that this is God's organization it hasn't always been smooth sailing I mean this I could write a book with the things that we have seen God do and the breakthrough that we have seen him bring I mean we had a witch doctor living on our land for three years story for another day but we have seen a God that is faithful come through for us. And so I'm standing here today representing all of our Kenyan team, all of our Kenyan kids, everyone who's had a touch from God, who's been transformed by God, telling you it is possible. It is possible to have God turn your life upside down. Look at Chloe. That was, I think, back in 2007, that photo. That was my first ever trip to Kenya. Um, the power of your yes. If you could just jump to the next slide. So today, this is what the Kenyan Children's Project has achieved. It was really hard to rein in on a few of our key facts, but this is what I wanted to share. 120 vulnerable children have been rescued, rehabilitated, and reintegrated back into safe and loving families. That is amazing. That's 120 children, many of whom would not be alive today without the Kenyan Children's Project. That is what has come from Stu and Close, yes, and a thousand other yeses. A thousand yeses from our Kenyan team, a thousand yeses from our missionaries. This is what God can do with your yes. 15 homes we have built for families in the communities. These are mud, um, semi-permanent homes that we have built for families that otherwise were living in unsafety with major leaks, some of them not even with proper housing. 15 homes. And this, we only started recording the, the number of people we were treating for tongaiasis in 2016. But since 2016 alone, 2,411 feet have been treated for tongaiasis. That is amazing. Some of our team have actually personally experienced tongaiasis. There's a number of them in this room. So if you would like to ask them more <laughs> about what that's like, they can testify that it's very painful um, and being healed and set free is definitely a good thing. I think we, let's dive into the video. I'm Rogers. I'm a member of Kenyan Children's Project family, and this is my story. It was very hard for me to, to stay at home because I was not going to school. I could not get good food, place to sleep, and I was really beaten at home. So I decided to run away to town. go in the pits and get food from there because we, we had no blankets, we had no mattress, we had no beds. So we used to have sacks and that's our mattress, that was our
now God has changed my life. God has just changed my life upside down. Now I know God and uh, I'm very happy to be a member of this family. I'm very proud. Rogers, <laughs> oh, so good. Rogers was one of the first five boys that were rescued off of the streets in Kakamega, and he has such a wild character. He has, from the very moment the organisation bumped into him, he used to dance in the in the lights of the vehicle at night and that's he would essentially try and perform um, for food but he has always been this character that is so full of joy and hope and even now I'm excited to share with you he has he's a man now he has two children and he is a qualified tailor and God has turned his life upside down. God has brought so much healing and hope through this boy. He was, um, he defied all statistics. It is, when you live on the streets of Kakamega, you're your life expectancy is maximum four years. And he, as a six-year-old, survived long enough to bump into our organization. A six-year-old living on the streets. And you know, we, we work with the most vulnerable children in our region. And so even now, 50% of the children that are currently in our urgent rescue center are there under... Um, hidden protection. We can't show photos of them. We can't share their stories. We can't share their names because they are children that are with us for their own protection. They are going through court cases. All of, well, men of, many of them are girls. Many of them have been victims of gang rape. Some of them as young as four years old. It's these kids. It is these kids that we exist for. It is the children that have been so neglected and so mistreated and so abused. These are the reason that we exist for the most vulnerable and for the children who are living on the streets. The youngest child we have rescued from the streets is four years old. Some of you in this room may have children. I have a nephew who's going to turn four next week. They should not be living on the streets. And this is why, even when it's hard, this is why. Thank you, sweetheart. This is why we do what we do for the most vulnerable children. And we are not an orphanage, just to be clear. In times gone by, orphanages has been a model that has been um, demonstrated a lot in Africa and people have set up orphan orphanages with good intentions and goodwill, but we know that there is a better model of care. Children deserve to be in family. And so our mandate is to get these children that have been so abused and so neglected and pull them into life again. And this is what we are seeing again and, and again. When we encounter these children, they may be in the gutters physically, but who knows that is not where their story ends? Who knows that is not the destiny that the Father has for them, that he has good things for them? You know, I want to even share with you this very exciting, very quick testimony. We have the children that we are brought into our rescue center, tested for HIV AIDS before they come in so we can keep the children safe. And not one child that we have brought into our care has had HIV AIDS. Now, 
clap because that is a miracle. When the project was launched in our town, one in three people had HIV AIDS, let alone the fact the children that we are working with are amongst the most vulnerable. They have, many of them have been sexually abused, many of them have lived on the streets, and so the statistics of those children having HIV would be even higher. Not one. 120 children and not one. That is only supernatural. And this is what happens when we pull these children into our covering, into the kingdom of God, the family of God. When we pull them off of the streets and we say, this is where you belong. You are not rejected. You are not neglected. You have a home. We pull them into the covering of the Father, the shadow of the Almighty. We pull them in and we are seeing them restored. So our first, our first Um, step is rescue. So this is what happens. We rescue, we intervene. And when I say we, we have a an incredible team of Kenyan staff. We are Kenyan led, we are Kenyan run on the ground, and we have awesome staff that are day in, day out doing this work. So these children are rescued. They're brought into our urgent rescue center where they receive temporary care and love. And we are committed to healing them, to restoring them. And all the while, our incredible social workers are out on the field tracing their family, finding their family, doing family therapy, family restoration to get them home again. So there's rescue. And then we go through this process of rehabilitation. Now, in that, it is... It's vital to heal their past so that they can have a different future. You know, we have to heal these these hurts just like with us. We have to heal the things that they've been through so that their future can look different. You know, even eating three meals a day is not something that these kids are have ever been used to. They can't come into our urgent rescue center and suddenly get fed up because they would be so ill. We have, (laughs) we had one boy. Oh, he's so funny, but bless him. The day we rescued him, he got his hands on a pack of honey roasted cashew nuts. And let's just say, Lord bless the caregivers because they had a lot of mess to give, to clear up. Anna, it was your sponsor child. (laughs) But they they need a process of rehabilitation because they're not used to this environment. They're not used to safety, to love, to routine, to three meals a day. And so they go through this process of counseling, trauma recovery, life skills, health skills, um, healthy living classes, spiritual nourishment, creative learning. We have a 90-day transformation program that all of the children go through. And we are seeing them change. We are seeing kids laugh. There's some children that they cannot smile when you first rescue them. And they come alive. They laugh. They find joy again. They find hope again. And then we get to place them back in families again. And sometimes this is their family that they were born into. Sometimes we can do bring restoration, but sometimes we need to find alternative care. So it looks like finding adoptive families for them locally. It looks like building relationships with aunts, uncles. Every case is different and every case requires Holy Spirit wisdom. I wanted to share a story with you about one boy named Moses. Well, he's not called Moses, but I'm going to call him that today because of child protection. Um, This is Moses. And can I hold it together? This little boy was found by one of our social workers who was out doing some work with the widows. He was out teaching the widows, doing some Uh, some healthy living classes and the widows brought to his attention this little boy. So our social worker Mwanzi followed them um, off off road down down this track to this mud house. There was a number of mud houses and they found this little boy. He was locked away since he was tiny. He had special needs. 
And so they thought he was cursed. And so he used to sleep with the chickens and the cow. He wasn't allowed in the house. He has a sister that is one year older than him who is pristine and has been in education all of her life. And he was treated like a dog. And so we found him and he was brought into our care. He was rescued. And, you know, that day was marked in the calendar, in the heavenly calendar as a day forever that would change. As a day that would be marked in history of a little boy coming into life and hope and love. And when he was rescued, he... He couldn't walk. He was so infested with jiggers that he could not walk anymore. And because he'd not been given space to run outside, we didn't know if he would walk again. He couldn't speak because he'd never been spoken to and he had learning difficulties. And our amazing, amazing Kenyan team got around him, poured in so much love and so much life. He speaks Swahili fluently now. He speaks some English now. He is going to school at a special unit down the road. This is Jackie, our, one of us, our counselors doing therapy with him. He is so full of life and so full of hope because he was found by Jesus. And, you know, we're doing a lot of work with his family and his wider family. We now oversee therapy. They're starting to understand the additional needs that he has, and they are starting to rebuild relationship with him. And we are very confident that one day he will be back with his family, his wider family, receiving love. But he, look at that face. He has been transformed. You cannot look at that face and tell me that God does not transform lives. And you know, I want you to be inspired by these kids because if God can do it for them, then he can do it for you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Some of you may have experienced abuse and neglect and rejection in similar ways to some of these children. But I want to tell you this morning, there is freedom for whatever you have been through. There is freedom. There is breakthrough. You are not too far gone. Your circumstances are not too difficult for the Lord. And, you know, as KCP, we get to reflect the heart of the Father. We get to be his hands and feet. We get to pick up these little ones and love them. And we get to see this breakthrough power of God come forth. You know, even today, I want to break the lie that God is a a quiet God, that God is a passive God. He's not. He is a God that um, burns in the fire. And he is, even like Tom was saying, a God that's in the rushing wind. And he is a force to be reckoned with. When the Father comes through into your life, into your circumstances, Psalm 91 Verse 14 to 15 says, Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer. I will deliver him, and I will honor him. Why don't you just take a moment to think about things in your life that you need to shift, things in your life where you need a God who delivers you to come through, a God who protects to come through. God is promising us those things. If you call on my name, I will protect you. I will deliver you. I will answer you. I will honor you. Do you know this kind of God? You know, there's so many times in my life where I've experienced a God that rescues. This kind of God that we're talking about, the kind of God that these kids know. I've experienced it myself. There's been times where I was going down this one path and the Father pulled me out. What felt like a little bit almost aggressively at the time because my life went from this direction to this direction. When suddenly my life came in line with the will of God. He pulled me out of a toxic environment environment to bring me into life and to hope. And so much good has come from that. There must be so many times even in your lives where you've experienced this God. You cannot be a child of God and not know this side of the Father, the Father that protects, the Father that defends, the Father that fights for, delivers us. 
this is our God. This is the kind of God that we know at the Kenyan Children's Project. Is this the kind of God that you know, that your family know? And you know, circumstances can change and the power of God can come and that is so awesome. But also, we can't lose sight of an even greater rescue that we've experienced and we've had. The Lord has rescued us from death from the power of sin. He is the ultimate rescuer. And this, everything we're doing with the kids, we're just getting to reflect the heart of the Father that is to rescue. That's all we're doing. We just get to reflect that side of his heart that's like, ah, you're worth fighting for. You're not rejected. You're not far from me. I'm sending my son so you will forever be close. I'm restoring the gap. I'm paying the wages of your sin. We've been made whole. We've been made alive in Christ. He wipes every tear. He heals every wound and he sets us free. You know, Jesus is the hero in every story. And that is so at the core of the Kenyan Children's Project. There's nothing remotely glorious about us, our team. It is the Lord. He is the hero in every story. He is the one with the great ideas. And we get to partner with him. And it is the biggest privilege of my life. You know, we worship a father who rescues and saves. If you read the Bible for five minutes, you will be undone and overwhelmed with the examples of the times that the father has done this again and again. He kept Daniel safe in a den of lions. He told Noah to build an ark. He freed the Israelites from slavery. He gave Sarah a son when she was barren and old. He gave Samson super strength. He made David a giant killer, and he pulled Lazarus from the the grave. Jesus defeated sin and death. There is nothing God cannot do. Why don't you just nudge your neighbor right now and tell them there is nothing that God cannot do. So are we all agreed? God is a God that rescues. Wave at me if you believe that. God is a God that rescues. God is a God that also restores and rehabilitates as we put it up on here. It's the same thing. You know, these values are awesome. We, our whole project is built on these three things, all of our projects. But you know, this is not a KCP model. This is not, there's other organizations that are doing this same model very, um, very, very well with incredible excellence. But this model, Jesus has been doing since the beginning of time. This is not some charity idea. This is the kingdom of God. This is the kingdom of God in all of history. The Father so graciously has been taking us on this journey since the beginning of time. This is his idea. This, every strategy we think we can come up with, he came up with it first. And it's so good. He restores us. Isaiah 61 verse 3 says, A crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of despair. He's traded all of the rubbish and given us joy, given us peace, given us gladness instead of mourning, joy instead of despair. He restores our minds. He redeems our past and our present and our future. He heals us. He forgives us. We can get new mindsets, new ways of thinking. Like the kids, when they come in, we have to teach them a new way of thinking. We have to teach the kids who have come off the streets. You sleep at nighttime, not in the day. Because on the streets, they sleep at they sleep in the day because it's safer than sleeping at night. The Father does this with us all the time. This is the way of thinking. This is heavenly, heavenly perspective. This is my plan. These are my ideas. This is what I made you for. This is the standard. The standard is wholeness and healing because that's what he paid for. He restores us. He re- rehabilitates us. And then he reintegrates us. 
Reintegration means um, being placed back into family. And this is what the Father does with us again and again and again. He rescues us. He rehabilitates us and he reintegrates us. He reminds us, you're part of a kingdom family. You're part of um, heaven's family. Your inheritance is the kingdom of God. Who's excited about having an inheritance of the kingdom of God? Who's excited that we have the whole of heaven behind us, that we have the resources of heaven behind us? He's a father. Jesus is a son. They are all about family, which is also why at the Kenyans Children's Project, we are all about family. Family, family, family. Family was his perfect plan. A mother and a father creating safety for children. And, and we see it in the church. This place is a family. God is so awesome that he created us to be part of a family where we can belong. And even I really feel like even in the room, there's people who feel like they don't belong. You belong. You belong in Catch the Fire London. You belong in this kingdom family of people where they can pull you up when you're having a bad day. They can speak hope when you're feeling hopeless. Even like this morning in worship, that was awesome to see people getting hugged. That's family. That is family too. You're having a bad time. I'm going to come around you and I'm going to release the kingdom of God to you. We had... One of our staff members in Kenya, Ursula, she's one of our street social workers, and she is exceptional. She is so inspiring. But probably coming up for about 18 months ago now, she, within a month, just rapidly deteriorated. She didn't know at the time, but she had a treat tumor on her brain. Very quickly, she went blind. And suddenly we had one of our best staff members that is going out, going at it, releasing the kingdom of God, saving kids from the streets, suddenly was blind and in pain. And she had to have brain surgery and she had twin children, two twin little girls. She couldn't see. Just one day she just went blind. And we, what was our response as a kingdom family because we are that in Kenya. We are a family with our staff. They release the kingdom of God to one another, to us, to the kids. Our staff came around her. They visited her very regularly. We made a decision as an organization to carry on paying her, even though she couldn't come to work and she couldn't see. And doctors said it looked looked bad because we made a decision to believe God has a plan for you and we believe you're going to come back to work because God hasn't finished with you yet and those kids need you so we carried on paying her and one trip I remember being in Kenya she came we we asked her to come we wanted to lay hands on her I had to lead her down the compound because it's really rocky in places and she couldn't see as far as putting her foot in one foot in front of the other I led her down and all of us just gathered around her and prayed. She walked by herself to that gate when she left. She is back at work. Her sight is restored. She wears glasses, but that's it. Like she can see. She is alive and well. The tumor on her brain was benign and she is thriving. And this is what kingdom family looks like. You're having a bad day. Let me release the kingdom of God to you. This is what it means. This is what these rescue, rehabilitate, reintegrate. That's what this means. It's like a hope, hope bomb just being released. Our lives should look different. What is our response going to be to this God? This God that transforms, this God that turns situations and lives upside down. Um, what is our response going to be? Are we going to be like Stu and Chloe and be brave and step out and say, yes, I'm, I don't have money, but I'm going to set up a charity because that's what you're asking me to do. Maybe he's asking you, will you go to Mexico with Satico and Derek and release the kingdom of God? Maybe he's asking you to get into Chalk Hill and love the people there. Maybe he's asking you to come alongside your own family members that are really struggling. You know, we all have a mission it looks different for us all, that we all have a mission, we all have purpose, and the Father cares. And you know, 
if I could release anything to you today, let it be a desire to, to have eternal impact. I want to live in such a way that my life impacts eternity. Because these kids get saved and they preach the gospel and they share this God um, with other people and then other people get saved. I want to live in such a way that my family knows God can transform any situation. I want to live in a way that impacts eternity. And the way you're going to do that is through people. People are the only thing that get to go up to the heavenly places. It's people. And so even, I just want to encourage you in your life, whatever it looks like for you, whatever your mission field is, open your eyes to the people around you, to the core within you. What is your KCP? What is the call on your life? Where is the Father asking you to carry his transformation presence and release it to the people around you? Very quickly, I'm going to do a whistle tour for the end. Our yes, our wild yes. I want to tell you today, after 14 years in Kenya, so we were planted in 2005, we were a registered organization since then. 14 years, we have been working towards a solution to get children off of the streets. We have always partnered with the Father to say, our vision is to see every child off of the streets in Kakamega. And for the first time in 14 years, I can actually tell you it is possible. It is possible. It has always been this thing of faith and trust and God, we know you can do it. We actually have a model where it is possible. It is possible. We did a census last year. There is 145 children who we registered as sleeping and living on the streets in Kakamega town. That's just our town. And we have been strategizing with other organizations who are doing similar work. And we have a model that works. There's an organization in Kasumi, which is a city about an hour and a half from us. They do the same model as us. They brought the street population down from 1,000 children to they have about 100 registered on the streets now. This works. This model works. This is not just like a faith-filled, crazy idea, which, you know, we need those two, but we have a model that works. So we have an urgent rescue center where we run this 90-day program, and we work locally with the children's department, the governments. The local children's department is asking us to train other children's homes in this model because the government recognizes this works. You know, if we... If we end the street crisis in Kakamega town, that will affect the crime rates, that will change the whole town. And when I say town, there's a university, like it's a big town. The Kenyan Children's Project is gonna be releasing great change, historic change in that town, and I believe it. We, many of you will know if you've been part of this family for any length of time that we are building, we have 21 acres of land where we are building an urgent rescue center, where we are building facilities for training the community. There's so many things I can't go into right now. We need another 485,000 pounds to complete that. Who knows, that's quite a lot of money. Honestly, we have already spent more than this on buying the land, the building to date. So I'm not worried because we didn't have anything to begin with. But I wanted, I wanted to say today, I am inspired by Catch the Fire London because you do not have a church building yet, but you are not stopping. You are not holding back what the Father has given to this church. You are not restricting what you are doing for the community. You are not not growing as a church family. You are fully going after what Jesus has given you. And so we want to be just like Catch the Fire London. And so we have decided we are going to take action regardless. We are partnering with the Lord to see the buildings complete on our new land. But in the meantime, we will not slow down. We will not not partner with the word and the promise that the Father has given us. And so this month, we are renovating our current town base that is less than one acre. 
Who knows, that is definitely not 21 acres, but it's what we have. And so we are renovating and we are making big changes so that as of next month, we can have 44 children housed at any one time in our urgent rescue center. And we have made the the wild decision to employ 22 more staff. We only had 27 to begin with. We are doubling our staff because we know this works. And who knows, there are kids like Rogers on the streets. They cannot wait. They can't afford for us to wait. Some of them will not survive if we wait to finish the build on the new land. And so we are taking action now. And I just want to say, if you want to join with us, we need an army of people behind us. We need people to give. We need people to pray. We need people to intercede. Sometimes there is real battles going on, and we need your yes behind us as a project to fuel what we're doing. We need your prophetic words. We need your support. We need your love. And so even today, there's going to be, there's people around in all different color t-shirts afterwards. If your heart has stirred for the Kenyan Children's Project and you want to ask the Father about partnering with us, we would invite you to become a life champion. Now, this is someone that, who is a monthly financial partner or a one-time giver who is believing in the cause. I want to champion life. I want to rescue kids. I want to see them be rehabilitated and I want to see them into family again. If you want to become a life champion today, there are forms on your seats. You can also chat to people on the stand afterwards. Just pray about whether that's right for you. You could give one pound a month. You could give five pound a month, 50 pound a month. We just want your yes. We want the, your yes, your blessing. And you may not be able to give financially, but we need your prayers. These kids need your prayers. And so I want to invite you to join with us. And I just, to, I'm going to bring this to a close now because we are right about on time. But I really want to pray for, for everybody here because you have a call. There is a call on your life. Each of us are called to mission. It's not just for people in Africa. It's not just for missionaries. You have a call on your life. And I want to extend my yes to you. I want to extend my yes, just like I'm up here asking for your yes, your prayers, your blessings. I want to extend my yes to each of you and the journey that the Father has for you. And so even where you are, if you want to be blessed into releasing transformation to the people around you. Would you just stand so we can pray for you? Matthew 5, verse 14, 16 says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And I just feel like this morning um, that God wants to just stir something up in each of us. And um, whether you're actually... if. Is everyone standing? Can, I think everyone's standing, because I think this is, this is for everyone. Um, you know, we're all called to live a life of missions, and that can look very different for each of us. And, you know, we are the body of Christ, and, and the body is made up of lots of different parts. You've got your feet and, and eyes and, and head and mouth and arms, and, you know, not everybody is called to go to... Kenya, not everyone's called to go to India. Some people uh, are called in their workplace. Some people are called um, to, you know, to invest into things going on locally. Other people are called to finance other people that are doing it. And so I, I really feel like this, that God wants to um, stir something in each of us because the worst thing that we can do is nothing. And, and, and I feel like he wants to stir up courage in us to respond um, because what we're talking about today 
you know, we, 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 we uh, were so excited by what God is doing in KCP. And so I would, want, I would love for every single person in this room to partner with KCP. Um, but also, more importantly than that, I want everybody to, to, to grab hold of what God wants to release through you because everybody has a very distinct and unique expression of what that looks like. Every person has a very different influence to, to the person next to you. And so why don't you just um, uh, just close your eyes for a second and... Um, I want to pray and, and I want to I I bless you into a life of missions. And, and this, like I say, this could look very, this is going to look very different to every person. But I feel like there's something that God wants us to, to, uh, to step forward to, to make an impact for eternity. Because this is not just about the short term stuff, this is about us investing into something so much bigger than ourselves. Um, Yeah, I feel like, um, yeah, we're going to do this slightly different. I want you to, if this, if uh, I encourage you just to do something, I encourage you just to step out. We've got space at the front because what we want to do is we're going to have people come and pray and just release a blessing over and, 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 and call people into this lifestyle. Um, <clears throat> so I just encourage you to do something different, whether that's just like stepping out, whether that's coming to the front. And Father, right now, I just ask that you would just release, um, God, I just ask that you would release boldness in the room. God, I ask that you would release courage in the room. And, and Father, I just ask that you would release um, wisdom and strategy for the stuff that you've been stirring in people's hearts to, to make a difference, to do something that's way outside of their world, that's way outside of themselves. Um, God, I ask that you would release the finances right now in the room for people that have something that's been deeply stirred inside of them. But God, I ask that you would release compassion in the room. Uh, so much of what we do is stirred by compassion. It's, 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 seeing, um, it's seeing people through the Father's eyes. And, and, and God, I ask right now that you would just lift the veil from our eyes so that we would see people. We would see the people around us. We would see... Um, these places that you've called us to influence, we will see them with your eyes. We will see people through their hurt and through their pain. God, that you would give us um, a compassion and a mandate uh, to, to release your kingdom through the people that we have encounters with. And I, and I feel like God is going to do something. I feel like he's going to start just to um, bring an awareness to our hearts this week. There's going to be people that he's going to highlight to us, that he's going to ask us to respond to. And that could be by giving them an encouragement and word. It could be to just to come and stand alongside them. It could be somebody that you feel that he, that you need to give um, money to or a gift. That, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I feel like you know it, it takes our yes, and it takes and a yes is a very proactive thing. It takes us stepping out. Sometimes I feel like there's been people that have been waiting. They've been waiting for too long for God to do something, and He's saying, I've been, "I'm waiting for you to do something. I'm waiting for you to step out." And so, God, I ask that you would just release a boldness in the room and a courage to step out, to step out in a fresh way, to step out um, in a courageous way to make a difference. God, I thank you that every single person in this room was called to make a difference. And, and, I, and I feel like there's, there's people that things have been so overwhelming that it's been so hard to even look outside of the stuff that's going on inside of you. And I feel like he's just beginning to lift your gaze. He's working deeply inside of you, but he's going to lift your gaze to start to release what he's put inside of you. And I just want to break off any intimidation I've really sensed that intimidation has crept in and the enemy has lied and he said, not you, you can't. And I break that lie in the power and the mighty name of Jesus right now. And I just declare, you can. You can because he is within you. He is raging war within you. He is uh, bringing a release of the kingdom right now. And I just speak a silencing to any lies for any of you that have been intimidated to feel like you cannot make a difference and your life doesn't have meaning. I break that lie that would tell your life doesn't have meaning. Your life has meaning. Your life has meaning. I see the Father coming right now and he's just restoring. He's restoring that to you right now. Your life has meaning. 
Your life has meaning. You are a light. You are a light that is not meant to be hidden. You are a light that is meant to be seen. You are meant to be one that is meant to release the kingdom of God to everyone around you. You are salt. I hear him saying, you are salt. You're meant to be flavorsome. You're meant to bring his glory. And I just want to declare over you, you are, you count. He counts you in. He's calling you forth and you're counted. You're counted in the call. You're counted in the call. You're not forgotten. You're not forgotten. Holy Spirit, would you come right now and would you just release destiny? And I just release a boldness and a courage that cries out, yes. I just impart every time that I have stood in courage and said, yes, God, I'll do it, whatever the cost, but fill me up. I release that kind of faith right now that says, Jesus, whatever the cost, I will do it for you. I will do it for your glory. I will do it for your name. I just release and just place into you right now courage and boldness to be who he's made you to be. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are going to take up our offering for Catch the Fire London today uh, for the Kenyan Children's Project. As I said, Catch the Fire London uh, made a decision right at its inception that every month we were going to support the project financially. So Catch the Fire London, part of your tithes normally every month go to the Kenyan Children's Project. We also encourage uh, all of our church staff, Abby and myself, personally give to the Kenyan Children's Project. Jess and Grace do as well. We've actually set up two separate standing orders um, I got busted today when I was watching that video from Rogers and it's never connected with me that he was the same age that my Jess is when he went onto the streets and that's not right, people. That's not okay. You know, James 1.27 says the, the worship that God finds pure and acceptable is to look after the widows and the orphans in their distress. And, and it occurs to me that everyone who's not yet saved is by definition a widow and an orphan. They're a widow insofar as they haven't met their bridegroom, Jesus. And they are an orphan insofar as they haven't been adopted into God's family. But as well as the spiritual widows and orphans, there are the literal widows and orphans. And that's the two main thrusts of what the KCP do. And so um, I challenge us often on this premise. I don't want you to pray and ask, is it right to give? That's completely the wrong mindset as a Christian. And I know these kind of situations are, we're in danger of manipulation and things like that. Hopefully those of you who know me know that's not what I'm about. But what I'm challenging you to is a mindset uh, shift in the area of giving. I don't believe as Christians we should be seeing presentations like this and be asking God, is it right to give? I believe we should be seeing presentations like this and the spirit of generosity should be to give. Our default should be, I want to support this in some way. By all means, pray and say, God, if this isn't right for me, be released. But what I'm going to challenge us and encourage us to do uh, as we take up the offering. So if you normally give to Catch the Fire London on a Sunday when you come, just give as you would normally. If you want to give extra, that's fine. But what I'm going to encourage each of us to do uh, is to ask God with the pre-assumption that it is right to give something. Now, that may not be money. You may have come today and you're unable to give financially. That's fine. I would challenge you, find one of the KCP members and say, what else do you need? Can I join your prayer list? I've heard that uh, a family from this church, Catch the Fire London, Jono and Kelly are out there as missionaries. How can I support them? Do they need a, a text message? Do they need a prayer support? Do you want me to prophesy over them as a family? There are so many ways we can give aside from financially, but also finances really do help the project. And so I'm going to ask as the pastor of this house for you to ask the question differently, not God, is it right for me to to give but God I want to give and if it's not right then tell me uh, but but let's be creative in the way we're doing that so we're going to have the offering baskets here as we do normally um, I've also set up a fund on the app so if you normally give through the app you can go into the giving page on the app and you can give a, a gift there and that will go uh, into the London account but it will be automatically earmarked for the KCP uh, and we promise we'll do a transfer over uh, into their account and so Holy Spirit we thank you we thank you for the, the joy and privilege it is to partner with charities like the Kenyan Children's Project. God, we thank you, just as Sarah so beautifully said, that rescue, rehabilitation, and reintegration is an age-old concept in the kingdom. God, we thank you that you are continuously rescuing us, that you are continually rehabilitating us, 
and you are continually reintegrating us. God, we thank you for your heart for us. And God, we thank you for your heart for each and every one of those kids in Kenya. So God, we just ask now that you would fill us up afresh. Teach us what it means to be kingdom-minded people, to be missional-minded people. God, challenge us, instruct us, encourage us, we ask. Amen. We're going to continue praying for people down the front here. If you're here and you have a healing need in your body, we believe that God heals today. Come uh, to the front. Make yourself known to one of the ministry team. We want to stand with you and partner with you for physical healing, for emotional healing, for mental healing. We believe that God heals and it is his will to heal today. So please, if you need healing, come and speak to us. If you want to find out how to join an Ignite group, come and speak to me. I can point you in the right direction and get you plugged in with a, a community uh, in your local area. Other than that, be blessed. Please do visit the KCP stand uh, and chat to the team there. Find out what's going on. Find out what.